Now, uh, final remarks against the motion from Kimberly Crenshaw. When affirmative action was withdrawn at the University of California in Berkeley and in UCLA, the participation of African Americans and Latinos fell to levels that we haven't seen since 1968. When you think about whether you want to vote for this proposal, you should think about whether you're satisfied with that. When you think about whether you want to vote for this proposal, you should think about whether you're satisfied with the fact that women contractors lost a 35% share of the contracts that they had had in California as the result of 209. When you think about voting for that, you need to think about women as well as people of color. Now, the other side says we don't talk about some of this evidence. Let me tell you something I will talk about. They tell you that students who graduate from Spelman, who go to Morehouse, who go to Howard, miraculously end up doing better than going to the elite institutions that they might otherwise have gotten into. They want you to think that the reason they do better there is that they're over there where they should belong with all the other black people. One. What they're not telling you is that these institutions have had a track record knowing how to encourage students, educate students, to create an environment where students feel confident to do their best. So rather than taking that as an indictment of the institutions that have taken qualified students and not allowed them to do their best, they follow the track and the proven uh, tradition of focusing on stereotypes about African Americans. So my point is, if you're unhappy with the inferences that are drawn from this position, if you're not a colorblind fundamentalist like Colin Powell, who is not, like Condoleezza Rice, who is not, then you know that there's still work to be done in this society. You know that this inequality is something that has to be addressed. And you know that just like any other social problem we care about, like asbestos, it would be silly to think we're going to solve as best as by being as best as blind. It's silly to think we're going to solve the problem of race by being colorblind. Terrence Pell, for the motion, it's time to end affirmative action. Well, tonight all of us are gathered here to defend the principle of equality. And I think we do that with a sense that equality is under siege as never before. Uh, and that's because real equality is never achieved. It's always coming into existence. As our opponents say, there's a lot of work to be done, and that's true. But today, the challenge to equality doesn't come from the political extremes. It comes from, really, the political middle. Moderates have tried to eliminate differences in achievement among black and white 18-year-olds by essentially engineering an admission system uh, that makes them go away. And with characteristic efficiency, uh, those preferences have been extended to every institution after uh, undergraduate college, including professional schools and public and private employment. Though they aren't intended to do so, these policies uh, perpetuate racial differences and they corrode social bonds. They make it difficult for minority high school students uh, to attend schools or their credentials would make them academically competitive. One. And that's the point about the uh, historically black colleges. It's not that blacks ought to go to the HBCUs. It's that the white schools, the elite schools, ought to learn from the way the HBCUs run their admissions programs. They admit on the basis of merit, and it makes a big difference. The most troubling aspect about tonight's debate has been the reaction of our opponents to efforts to disclose the problems and end these policies. Our opponents essentially demand that we continue to wink at real differences in qualification and demand also that we remain discreetly silent about the predictable consequences of this winking. It's time to put an end to race preferences. It may have been a good idea at one point, but it no longer serves a useful purpose. There are too many other important issues that we need to be talking about if we're going to achieve real equality in our lifetime. Terrence Bell, uh, thank you very much. Uh, that concludes the, the final remarks. It's now time for you to decide who carried the day? You voted before the debaters began, the panelists began debating, and the results were as follows. 34% of you uh, voted in favor of the motion, it's time to end affirmative action, 44% voted against, and 22% uh, were undecided. After the debate, 39% uh, of you uh, favored, were for the motion, it's time to end affirmative action, uh, against 55%. Uh, undecided 6%. Uh, the team against the motion carries the day uh, with an absolute majority and a stronger increase. Congratulations to the team against the motion. Well done.